Hello and welcome to Worship with St. Philip Lutheran Church. If this is your first time checking out St. Philip, welcome. We hope you'll check us out again. Um, as we enter into worship today, we have a few announcements. One, we want to take time out to think about Bob Armstrong, Robert Armstrong, a member of the church. Um, he is currently in the hospital as of this recording with some health issues. And as we find out more about his situation, we will relay the information to you all. So we continue to be in prayer for him. Uh, Vicar Amelia, the intern, Amelia Collins, will be starting next week. She'll be going back and forth between St. Philip and St. Paul Lutheran Church in Dearborn, and we're excited for all the energy and all the wonderful things that are going to happen at the church in the future. Uh, some good news last week is that the Supreme Court upheld uh, a decision to prevent uh, discrimination against LGBTQIA plus folks in the workplace, which is really important for us. Um, a couple years ago, we had a, a transgender support group for people who are transgender could come and uh, show support with each other here at the church. And one of the, the members of this group, um, whose name is Amy, she was one of the people who was really um, vocal in getting this bill, um, the Supreme Court ruling, um, to, to take place. And so this is really special for us. Other than that, I think we will now enter into our time of worship. We'll now enter into our statement of faith. The Bible verse that is at the core root of our being as Christians, and we say it together. For it, it is, is by grace, grace you have been saved through faith, faith and, and this, this is, is not from our yourselves. own doing. It, it is, is a gift, gift from of God. God. Our statement of inclusion. For everyone born. A place at the table. For young and for old. A place at the table. For gay and for straight. A place at the table. For rich and for poor. A place at the table. Everyone together building a bigger table. We'll now move into our time of confession. Let us confess together. Incarnate God, for the, for the times, times we've, we've hurt you, forgive, forgive us. For the, for the times we've hurt, hurt others, forgive, forgive us. For the, for the times we've hurt ourselves, ourselves forgive, forgive us. For we are made in your image, and, and it is very good. Amen. Please join me in singing ELW number 579. Lord, you give the Great Commission.
Russian Orthodox monastery has an older monk telling a younger one, I have finally learned to accept people as they are. Whatever they are in the world, a prostitute, a prime minister, it's all the same to me. But sometimes I see a stranger coming up the road and I say, oh Jesus Christ, is it you again? The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said to the 12 disciples, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of the prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of those will lose their reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, friends, this is a very short Bible verse that we have this week from Matthew, but there is a lot going on there. Now, I have looked at so many different articles, so many different Bible websites, so many different Bible books, and I've come to see that you can go in so many different verse ways to talk about this Bible verse. There are so many ways to look at it. There is just so much going on. So I really want to dig in and go in a unique direction of how I see this Bible verse. And as I try to understand what God is saying to us in our community today, but I want to put out there that I know that many different people can look at this very unique Bible verse in many different ways. But I just want to share one of the ways how I understand it today. And similar to last week, Jesus is talking to his people about what does it look like to do God's work in the world. When Jesus ascends into the heavens to the right hand of Father, what does the mission look like? What is the work of the people? And maybe even most importantly, how do we do this work together? And so Jesus is talking to his followers and he brings up this powerful theme. Jesus brings up the theme of welcome. He wants his disciples to think about what does it mean to welcome. And one thing we know about the welcoming of Jesus is that it is radical and it is a deep welcome. In this Bible verse, Jesus first reminds the disciples that they are equipped and they have the gifts to do this work. Because he tells them, when you're doing this work, people will welcome you and they are welcoming me, which means they are welcoming the Father as well. But know that there is some action that goes into being welcoming for other people. That while people will be welcoming the disciples when they go out into the world, they will do some welcoming of their own. And when we skip down to the last part, we see Jesus talking about, even if you give a little bit of cold water to the little ones, that you will not lose your reward. And so we ask ourselves, Well, who are the little ones? In some ways, we can see the little ones as the children. In some ways, we can see the little ones as those who have been cast aside. In some ways, we can see little ones as those who people ignore. But we're reminded from this text that part of being welcomed means even digging into the little details and the little actions and doing all the little deeds that will help people in the littlest of ways and we see how Jesus sees that those little deeds and those little values and those little moves are actually big in the grand picture. 
So friends, Jesus is letting his followers know that you have the gifts and the abilities that God has equipped you to do this work. And it is hard work, but it is necessary. So friends, hear me when I tell you that God has called you and God has equipped you and God has blessed you with everything that you need to be doing God's work in the world, whatever that looks like that you can do this. And now I move to the next part of my sermon. And I want to think about the theme of welcome. Because not only are the disciples being welcomed, but they get to do the welcoming. And there can be hard work in welcoming. Let us think about when we were growing up. Your family members that you lived with, the people you lived with, your guardians, what did it look like in your household when you knew that you had guests coming over? How did you create welcome? I remember in my household, we did everything that we could do to make things look as nice as possible. The kids, we had to make sure all the toys were put out the way. All the family pictures were sure to be not crooked anymore and set them up. All the romance novels that my mom and dad liked to read, they went away into the parents' bedroom. And when we were preparing to have guests over, our house was just so different than what it was like when we didn't have guests over. And I know that I am not the only one that can confess to that. I know you all have stories of when you're trying to be a welcoming house. And what about now? What do you do now to prepare your own spaces when you have guests? I know that I'm trying to do last minute cleaning. I'm making sure all my light bulbs work. I'm making sure that there's nothing that people can trip over. And I'm for sure making that there's a Bible on my coffee table, just in case the guests come over. And I know I'm not the only one that puts a Bible on their coffee table, the one they don't ever read, but they just want to show that they have a Bible there. I remember that it was so important for us to show that we were welcoming and we had to set things up. But it's important to not lose the authenticity of yourself when you're trying to be welcome. I remember when I was growing up and some of the best times I had with guests is after my parents and their friends all got to know each other and they felt more comfortable that we would not be worried about what the house looked like when the guests came over. Back in the day, we would just be so focused on having a good time. We would have friends come over when the Lions had Barry Sanders, and we just had a good laugh of watching Barry Sanders run the football. Or later on, when the Detroit Pistons had a good team in the 2000s in this sport ball thing, and my parents' friends would come over, and we would all watch the game together, and then we would watch um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And I never got any of the questions right, but it's okay. But we were focused on being our authentic selves together. That somehow in our authenticity, we were being welcoming. Doesn't it feel really good when you can just chill out and relax with those people around us and not worry about being perfect? Like you don't worry about that your child or your toddler might draw on the wall with markers or they might try and throw their Chipotle all over the ground that you don't have to worry about that and you can just be your authentic self. And so friends, when I think about welcome in the Bible and I think about Jesus talking to his disciples, I think about my house growing up and about how we wanted everything to be just right. But how the most authentic and welcoming moments came when we stopped trying to make everything be just right. And so the call for the church today is that we can be a community of welcome. We can do this by making sure we have everything in order at the best way we can but also doing that while trying to be our most authentic selves. 
where we focus on building relationships and listening to each other, where we allow relationships to grow closer. God brought God's authentic self into the world in the form of a savior named Jesus to show people how to live. And when things did not go just right, when the kids were throwing food all over the place, when the disciples were acting up, Jesus showed them authenticity. Jesus showed them grace. Jesus showed compassion. So friends, you are equipped by a loving God to do this work in the world, to be welcoming to those around you in your communities, in your states, in your countries. Our people, our family, our friends, they come around us and we build relationships and they don't need to hear a strong lecture from us. They don't need to hear all the rules from us. What they need to hear is a word of grace. What they need to hear is to hear God's love in our actions. They need to see what God is doing in our lives and how God has called us to be loving others. They need to see how we are so transformed by God's authentic gospel that we cannot help but love our neighbor as ourselves. So you, yes, I'm talking to you. You can go out and have the ability to share God's love with someone else. You have the ability to go out and support someone. And that person may be white, black, brown, yellow, green, gay, straight, man, woman, gender non-conforming. But that person, whoever that is, has the chance to see your authentic loving self. And they get to see God's love working throughout you. And that, my friends, is a welcome that is so, so good for us. Let it be so. And all the faith-led people said, Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing BLW670, Fill Us Up, Lord.
together and sang the Apostles' Creed, which is a statement of what we believe as Christians. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll now enter into our prayers. Let us pray. Call into unity with one another and the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world. God of companionship, encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations, shape our shared future, and give us hearts eager to join in a festival shout of praise. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where the earth is crying out. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authority, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy. God of care, accompany all who are in the deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, lonely, or abandoned, especially Bob Armstrong, Ronnie Morris, um, Heidi Hebert. Strengthen those who are in prison or awaiting trial. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of community, we give thanks for this church. Give us passion to embrace your mission and vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of love, you gather us in your embrace. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promises. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Shall we join in together and recite and say the Lord's prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Please receive the benediction. May God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can actually make a difference in this world so that you're able to do with God's grace what others claim cannot be done. Who are we? The church. What do we do? Change the world. How do we do it? With the love of God. Go in peace. Clean up the Chipotle. Thanks be to God.